Well, you, you said something really interesting, you know, dysregulation of the immune system. So if we have a dysregulation, we have to think about how do we bring back regulation, right? How to take something that's abnormal or non-functional or maybe dysfunctional and make it again functional. Well, I think if we look at the root, the chronic root is inflammation. If the liver becomes inflamed and those cells forget what they're doing, how are they going to send good, healthy signals to the brain and back and forth? Mm -hmm. So we have to, again, consider that root called inflammation as the key. There was one thing that the people could really, really own. That would be the understanding of the power, the role, the duty, the responsibility, the authority of our states. causes inflammation in psoriasis? That's an interesting question because we were watching TV the other night and um, it was interesting because we saw this commercial of people going through life. One was in the gym and one was out working out outside and they were talking about psoriasis. They were talking about taking an immune suppressant for that, like a medication, right? And I got to thinking to myself, well, is that the real solution to the problem? If psoriasis is tied to autoimmunity, what would be causing the autoimmunity? We just don't want to shut off the response, do we? No, we don't. And we have to think about, well, really, what is psoriasis? Psoriasis is a dysregulation in the immune cells, which causes the buildup of skin cells on the surface of the skin, which causes these plaques or mm. patches in certain areas that can become very painful. So in order to get ahead of that, issue with psoriasis, we have to go to the root and help balance the immune system, regulate it. Instead of turn it off, we want to help balance it so that psoriasis can improve. Well, you, you said something really interesting, you know, dysregulation of the immune system. So if we have a dysregulation, we have to think about how do we bring back regulation, right? How to take something that's abnormal or non-functional or maybe dysfunctional, and make it again functional. So a lot of times the treatment for those things are going to be like an immune suppressant. You know, we've all heard them out there. Again, that just turns off the noise or the alarm bells of the immune system. So maybe you would get a less flare of the psoriasis or maybe, maybe not get a flare. But did that stop the upstream cause of that process? No, it's like a Band-Aid while the dysregulation is still there. It just takes down a response. So dysregulation is to fix that. We have to go back upstream as you, you talked about and talk about some things that might be contributing to that. And boy, number one is what we put in this thing right here, our mouth. Yeah. And we call that border control. Yeah. You have to control what comes across the border into the system. If we're eating the standard American diet every day, that is inflammatory. And if psoriasis is an inflammatory condition, we can control a lot of systemic inflammation by what we put at the end of your fork. We call that fork yeah. curls. If it's fresh and raw, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, and good clean proteins, those things have vitamins and minerals and nutrients in it that actually help regulate the immune system instead hmm. of dysregulate it like the standard American diet does. I was thinking about, you said something, border control. I think we we're complaining these days about open borders. Well, the greatest open border we have that's causing the greatest catastrophe right now in America is not uh, in the border of Texas and Mexico. No, nope, it's the border of our mouth, right? That's the, We get it open and it allows all kinds of nonsense to come in. Inflammation, we should look at as like not just a bad thing. It's, it's really a good thing. But when it becomes exceedingly elevated for a long period of time, chronic, if you will, it becomes a negative experience because inflammation is no more, no less than the body's signal that there's an emergency going on. But if you keep bringing in the emergencies in here – emergency, emergency, inflammation after inflammation cause her, then you're going to have this process of chronic systemic elevated inflammation all the time. And 
you know, even psoriasis, we tend to think, okay, if we got the, the patches on the skin that are painful, itchy, swelling Plaques, red, patches, people scales, can see them. It's just the rashes. Mm -hmm. That is not the end of the story. One autoimmune condition is all autoimmunity. One thing that we classify as immune dysregulation is all immune dysregulation. So we typically get hyper-focused on one thing, like in the skin department, when we should be talking about other departments as well in the body or compartments. And it's fascinating to me how we get so hyper-focused and think that's my problem when the problem is really bigger than that, isn't it? Well, it is. So we have to treat the system as a whole. Mm -hmm. And if inflammation is at the root of the problem and inflammation is the cause of all chronic sickness and disease, we've got to improve this thing called inflammation. Now, if I have a cut, a cough, a cold, a flu, a break, a bone, I want my inflammatory system to come to the rescue quick, fast, strong. But if I've got this autoimmune condition, I want my mm -hmm. immune system to be a little smarter and be able to regulate it a little faster. So those are things like of course, changing border security, yep. what's coming into the oral cavity, into the system with fork curls, that good nutrition. We also, we've talked about this before, and that's going to be weight control. For every pound yeah. a person is overweight, that is inflammatory. So in, in the fat cells, that is where toxicity is stored. That's where, you know, abnormal chemicals are produced. What's the where the immune system can go awry? Excessive fat tissue can actually be like its own endocrine organ and dysregulate these autoimmune conditions. So the question becomes, and, and people should understand this, is we are not anti-medication. We are proper not. usage of medication. So we might want to use medication to turn down the fire that's a raging uh, forest fire in Inferno, but we've got to get behind the thing and figure it out. Now, sometimes we would use a medication in that case, but sometimes, many times, if you go right to the control of your border and put in good food, the problem goes away, doesn't it? It gets much, much better with good nutrition optimization of body composition. Of course, we've got to do things like staying active, get yep. blood oxygen and nutrients to the tissues. We've got to get enough sleep because sleep is a stressor. And if sleep is not uh, accounted for and we get stressed out and under rested, that's a degree of inflammation mm -hmm. that can upregulate that immune system, just like taking in other toxins like alcohol or smoking or yep. drugs. So good lifestyle practices that focus on sleep, exercise, um, de-stressing, and eating well can, in the long term, prevent, even help reverse autoimmune conditions. Now, we've seen the measurables, like the antibodies that we measure in typical blood tests, go down with doing those things. People say that it can't be reversed, but we've seen that before with our own eyes Proven. Now, we're not saying it can be reversed every time. Some There's circumstances we don't know about. But for the most part, people need to think about how to avoid those things altogether. And well, and I just think about this body as a healing machine. Yep. It's a healing temple. It is designed to heal itself. So if we do right by the system with good nutrition, mm -hmm. right physical exercise, right supplementation, yes, we might have to use a medication. If we're optimizing our stress levels, getting the right sleep, and even using the right hormone balance, that's a win when it comes to autoimmune conditions. So here's the moral of the story. Honor the temple and it will honor you. Keep the temple regulated and it will not become dysregulated. We hope you've learned something from this segment. And when you navigate through these, these economies with people, here's, here's what happens. We want to hold their hand through it, let them know when it's time to buy, sell, reallocate, get out of Dodge. Because a lot of times when you're struck with fear, fear does two things. Number one, it can paralyze and, and people just put their head in the sand and say, I'm just going to forget about it and hopefully it gets better. Or it causes you to make a wrong decision. And this is why we are here is to help people navigate through the political quagmire nonsense that's going on, the economic malaise and the absolute collapse that we're seeing. And when our freedoms are eroding, our political freedoms, our economic freedoms, our personal freedoms, our religious freedoms, our health freedoms, 
They're all tied together, but you know what doesn't need to erode with that? Our finances. Kirk Elliott, PhD.com forward slash Sherwood. There's a lot of talk these days about human enhancement. Terms like biohacking, bioharmonizing, biosynergizing, stacking, resilience, and anti-fragility. In our clinic, the Functional Medical Institute, we've been helping people of all shapes, sizes, and backgrounds improve their quality of their physiology and maximize their lives. So, you can follow the latest fads and gimmicks and maybe find some things that work for you. Or, you can add Kingdom Fuel to your daily regimen right now. It's the simple start to a transformed life. Our unique meal shakes are balanced. Low glycemic, rich in fiber with 20 grams of clean protein, essential vitamins and minerals, healthy fats and organic fruits and vegetables. Kingdom Fuel is vegan with a complete amino acid profile. No gimmicks, just proven results. Start today at Sherwood.tv forward slash fuel. Hey there, Kevin Sorbo here. Now deep down, we know this. We're, we're more than just a brain and a body. We're a spirit we're a soul, and we're also a physical temple. If you hit the wall when you're trying to improve one aspect of your being, it's probably because, well, other aspects are sabotaging our success. So that's why diets don't work. And frankly, why so much conventional wisdom from our so-called medical establishments falls flat. Doctors Michelle and Mark Sherwood have a very different approach. I should know because I happen to be one of their patients. They address the whole person to get to know you, your challenges, and more importantly, what your goals are. Then they offer a complete plan that addresses your unique biology and your heart. They'll help you discover what you need to experience transformation. So find out more at Sherwood.tv slash Sorbo. That's Sherwood.tv slash Sorbo, or see the link before. Now, I'm heading for a workout. You should be going for a workout, too. All right, guys. God bless. What is the liver-brain axis, and does it play a role in dementia? Liver-brain axis. The first time I heard that was in that article you're referring to. I mean, we hear about the pituitary, adrenal, thyroid, sex hormone axis. HPA axis. Gut brain axis, you know, all these axes. Well, I think that the lesson learned here as we get into this discussion about the liver brain axis is every organ system communicates with every other organ system in this massive, important, amazing, God-created organism, which is pretty cool to think about. So when we talk about liver brain axis, what's the connection? Well, I think if we look at the root, the chronic root is inflammation. If the liver becomes inflamed and those cells forget what they're doing, how are they going to send good, healthy signals to the brain and back and forth? Mm -hmm. So we have to, again, consider that root called inflammation as the key in the liver brain axis. One of the most common And I mean, this is super common. I would estimate that probably one in four Americans are suffering from this. Non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Okay, what the heck? Non-alcoholic fatty liver, Mm -hmm. right? Why are so many suffering from that? It's because like we don't process things like high fructose corn syrup, which is in everything. So the next time you look at your ketchup bottle, you're going to see high fructose corn syrup there. We don't process that. So what happens in that over the course of time in young and old is we get these fatty pockets built up in sort inside of our liver, which makes the liver dysregulated and dysfunctional. And that in turn has an association with brain dysfunction. And it, it's kind of trippy to think about, really, but it does make sense, doesn't it? Well, when we're talking about body composition and visceral fat, one of the main organs that 
processes our carbohydrates, proteins, our fats, our micronutrients, everything that goes through the gut goes through the liver. Mm -hmm. So the liver sees it all. And if the liver starts to get overwhelmed and overcome with fat deposits, that's actually going to take the function of liver down. And the liver essentially becomes inflamed. So now it is not sending an accurate signal to the brain. Mm -hmm. It's sending the single signal of inflammation to the brain. And therefore, the brain's um, reaction and response may be a different message, a different signal, a different understanding. So that gut or that liver brain axis becomes disrupted as the liver becomes dysfunctional. So we're talking liver inflammation is associated with brain inflammation. And this chronic inflammaging process really becomes the thing we're talking about here because today, I think it's um, pretty fair and pretty accurate that most people would agree is that we're having a rise in this Alzheimer's dementia process. And it has a lot of factors, uh, but we should understand that it is and does is known by another name, type 3 diabetes. So if type 3 diabetes sounds like type 2 diabetes, it probably it should be sound like that. Because, it has a relationship. Yeah, type 2 diabetes is really associated with Fatty liver. And if you're wondering if you got fatty liver, you can actually test that. We test that through the comprehensive metabolic panel. And most doctor's offices test this, but we're looking at those liver enzymes. If they get elevated, that shows you the liver struggling. And, and then you ask the simple question, well, do you eat high fructose corn syrup and processed foods? The answer is yes. Bingo. There's the cause. Well, we should mention the other cause. It's alcohol. We don't break down the alcohol very well. So you can get this alcoholic fatty liver as well. Yeah, some people don't make that enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase. So alcohol is more of a toxin. Yes. It's the first to burn. It's going to be a toxin anyway. That's why they say don't get behind the wheel of a car when you're drinking alcohol as the body doesn't process it very mm. well. The other interesting thing is, is that since inflammation is at the root of all chronic sickness and disease, now if the liver becomes inflamed... Not only can we see that like on a liver chemistry panel in our clinic, we also do two other tests. One is called the whole body scan mm -hmm. and the other one is called a bioimpedance or in body. So we can actually test visceral fat and we can see if that system is starting to get into a place of um, harm or into a place of dysmetabolism and dysregulation. So we might actually be able to pull mm -hmm. a person back from the fence of having this thing called dementia, mm -hmm. if there is this liver brain axis, if we can identify that early and say, hey, look, it's probably time you do do some border control and go home and take a look at your lifestyle and making sure that you're not putting too many things past the border that your liver yeah. has to deal with. Well, two things that are kind of like, well, not gross to think about, but maybe gross for some is you think about a cow. When we eat that marbled steak, we hear that's what oh the my flavor goodness. is, man. Yeah, we don't think but about that. That is a cow that has extra that's fat like a crammed into the muscle. Cow. That's a diabetic sick cow who also mm. has fatty liver as well. And we think that's good, but that's the worst thing to do because we're actually now ingesting the toxins which are stored in the fat. The second thing which we really need to understand as well, as you mentioned at the top, is that the liver stores nutrients, a whole bunch of them. And we see people that are short in nutrients. And many times when we're looking at places from a diet to consume to get those nutrients back, guess what organ comes to the top? The liver. liver right? So we, we used to eat liver a lot, but I'm going to say you need a fatty <laughs> liver. Find good liver to eat it, and it works good stir fry. So, you know, the liver can be beneficial, but it also is this, this initial sign of something gone awry. Well, and again, it is a very interesting thing that we can't single out just one organ and talk about the liver. Right. We have to think about the liver and the brain. We have to think about the gut and the liver. We have to think about the gut and the brain and the gut brain liver axis. Mm -hmm. The body is connected and it sees all and knows all. So it's just very important to treat it with tender, loving care starting with what's at the end of your fork, because that happens three times a day, sometimes three times a day, two snacks, 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of medical decisions that we're making. And if they're all in line with inflammation, 
boy, that leads to chronic sickness and disease and probably that Alzheimer's dementia quicker, faster, and sooner than we like. And yet we probably have more of a hand in that than we think. Take care of your liver. Fatty liver can be reversed. We see that all the time as well. If you're worried about that, you need to get some tests. You can come see us at the Functional Medical Institute. What does our constitution really mean? And how do we interpret it? Find out next with our constitutional attorney expert, Chris Ann Hall. Let's get real. Most emergency food is just as bad for you as any other choice in the standard American diet. And that's just sad. We don't just need food. We need highly nutritional food. We don't just want to survive food shortages. We are meant to thrive in adversity. Complete your daily nutrition and have shelf-stable Kingdom Fuel as a cornerstone of your food supply. Don't sacrifice your health or your taste buds. Stock up on Kingdom Fuel now. And when you navigate through these, these economies with people, here's, here's what happens. We want to hold their hand through it, let them know when it's time to buy, sell, reallocate, get out of Dodge. Because a lot of times when you're struck with fear, fear does two things. Number one, it can paralyze and, and people just put their head in the sand and say, I'm just going to forget about it and hopefully it gets better. Or it causes you to make a wrong decision. And this is why we are here is to help people navigate through the political quagmire nonsense that's going on, the economic malaise and the absolute collapse that we're seeing. And when our freedoms are eroding, our political freedoms, our economic freedoms, our personal freedoms, our religious freedoms, our health freedoms, they're all tied together. But you know what doesn't need to erode with that? Our finances. Kirk Elliott, PhD.com forward slash Sherwood. You know, people often ask me, what has been the most destructive lie the American people have been taught about the federal government and the U.S. Constitution? Now, Doc, you and I have talked about this on a previous segment, but it really boils down to the lie that the supremacy clause in the Constitution establishes that the federal government and federal laws are superior to state laws and state constitution. Now, our previous segment went into detail and explained how that is absolutely not true. And just a simple reading of Article 6, Clause 2, which is the Supremacy Clause, proves that. But you see, with that deception that has really infested the minds and politics of American government, we have had a falling away of the understanding of governors and attorneys general and even the people of their states of the power and the duty and the responsibility of the state to stand against the exercise of unauthorized federal power. And if there was one thing that I want the American people to really know today, if there was one thing that the American people could know that would change the whole dynamic. I'm not usually a one thing person, right? Because I understand that life is multifaceted and there are many solutions to a single problem and there are complications and details that need to be worked out. So I'm never really a one thing person, but in this situation, there was one thing that the people could really, really own. That would be the understanding of the power, the role, the duty, the responsibility, the authority of our states to say to the federal government, I'm sorry that con the Constitution does not authorize the exercise of that power and we will not comply. And so in that authority, we have a solution 
to nearly every single federal problem that we see today. The ATF gun grab. States actually have the authority and the duty to say no. We're not going to let you enforce those laws in our state because there's no authority for you to govern what we sell and how our people uh, keep and bear arms within our states. There's no authority for you for that. No, we're not going to let your Environmental Protection Agency come in and rule and reign over our land. And by the way, the FDA and the USDA Sorry, we don't find that authority in the Constitution. Because remember, we're the states that created the federal government. We're the creators of the federal government. And as the creators of the federal government, we have the authority to say, you know what? We didn't create you with that power. So that power does not exist uh, to be authorized in our state. Not only are we not going to help you uh, ex exercise that power, but we're not going to let you exercise that power on our people the Department of Education, the Department of Interior, the Department of Ag, the, uh, the uh, Forestry Service, all of these organizations are extra constitutional. And according to Article 6, Clause 2, if their power is not exercised pursuant to the Constitution, the power is null and void. And what the American people and our governors and our attorneys general need to understand is that applies to the judiciary as well. The Supreme Court's authority is limited and defined by Article 3. The, the Supreme Court and federal court authority is limited and defined by the powers delegated to the federal government. So if the power, the authority is not delegated to the federal government, the federal judiciary doesn't have jurisdiction over the matter. So if there is no authority for uh, delegated to the federal government to rule and reign over uh, what we eat, what we drink, what we smoke, what we ingest, what we wear, what we buy, what we sell, how we live, how do we use our resources in our states, all these things that happen internally in the state, then the Supreme Court has no jurisdiction over those matters either. So we have to understand and we really have to own this that our states not only have an authority, they have a responsibility to say no. And we have this information documented for you in our book, Sovereign Duty. We have this information documented for you in a film we call Non-Compliant Movie that can be found at noncompliantmovie.com. And we wanna help you know this because all political powers derive from the people and the people have to stand for the proper application of their constitution in order to defend their rights. So I'm um, thank you, Doc, for letting me bring this information to the people. Uh, there are many ways to come to this understanding. We want to help you with some of them, but that's the one thing I wish everybody would know right now. Exploring biohacking, bioharmonizing, biosynergizing, stacking, resilience, or anti-fragility. Start here. No gimmicks just proven results.